And we call this Kuba, K-U-B-A. And this makes your online communication, especially online communication, much more effective and way more influential. What this is allowing you to do is essentially package up what you have to say in a way that people can very easily um, connect with, very easily take on board, and then gives them the information they need to take the next step or to have some kind of action. And this can be really, really good for um, writing anything from a social media post right through your full-fledged email. And I've got some great examples, and these are real-world examples I'm going to show you soon too, of how Cooper is used really well and how it's not used and the whole thing just feels horrible. So Cooper stands for uh, K, which is the know, U, which is understand, B, which is believe, and A, which is action. And they all come about with uh, a series of uh, you know, words that can be written down or, or conversation points that can be used that help someone to know what they need to know. First of all, what is the information that needs to be known in this piece of communication? The second is, what does that person at the other end need to understand about what your information is? So this is where you're going beyond what this, you need to know this. Now you need to have a deeper understanding of this as well. Thirdly, we're asking people to believe in something. And often that's believing in their ability to do it. And I'll have a bit of an example of that in a second. And finally, what the action is that they need to take. So if I go back to the beginning, what do they need to know? What do they need to understand about what you just communicated that they need to know? How they can believe that they can actually carry this out and then the action that you need them to take. So that all sounds really nice and it reduces the chance of misinterpretation, which was ultimately what we're trying to do but how do we apply that in the real world? Because it all sounds like a great university theory, but how do we make it work? So let's look at the example of KFC in Alice Springs at the moment. So they have, um, I had a lovely photo of this that someone um, took and sent up to me. I should have actually just posted it on here, saying that we are currently out of chicken pieces. This is due to supply lines being cut off by flooding between Adelaide and Alice Springs. We'll be back to our regular menu once the supply lines open again, which the Bureau of Meteorology and NT Roads indicates maybe at least another week. For now, you can enjoy our burgers, tenders, chips, and extras. This is the perfect Kubo, and this is a sign of a company that really believes in clear communication to customers. So the Kubo starts with, what do they need to know? What they need to know is that we are currently out of chicken pieces. What they need to understand is this is because of the supply lines being cut off due to flooding. What, um, what they need to believe in is this idea from the Bureau and NT Roads that it may be about another week. So they can you know, look at that and go, oh yeah, I can hang on for that long. It's about another week, we get it, it's all like that. Or they can believe the story. So you're not just saying basically that, yeah, it's cut off, but here's a bit of more about when we think this might be you know, solved. And then the action is then, they can either choose to walk out because they want chicken pieces, or they can go, you know what? I'm just gonna have a burger this time or some tenders or some chips or some uh, a coleslaw or a, or a chocolate mousse or something. I love KFC's chocolate mousse actually. But with all that, it's giving you the perfect K-U-B-O. The first paragraph, K, no. The second one is understanding of why they're out of chicken pieces. That's the U. The B is the belief, which is looking at about a week. And then the A, the action to take next, is very clear. Now I'm going to make that the opposite when we go to Chemist Warehouse. This is a Chemist Warehouse and the sign that was, um, I didn't take a photo of this one, but I remembered it so well, inside a Queensland Chemist Warehouse um, while rapid antigen tests were really, really, really rare, starting to become a little easier to get now. Please stop asking for rapid antigen tests. We don't have any, don't know when we'll have any and don't know who else has them, exclamation mark. Whoa, aggressive. They've obviously someone's been having a bad day with that one or they just decided that, oh, maybe they have just decided they're not really going to um, go too well with this. They think that there's, you know, they're just sick of hearing the questions probably. That's probably where it came from. But instead of, you know, going down the route of Kubo, of saying, here's something you need to know, which is we are out of rapid antigen tests. Here's something you need to understand is due to supply lines and uncertainty of when we get our next stop, we do not, we don't actually know when we're going to have some more. Then the belief is that uh, they're going into the, um, we actually don't know exactly when they're going to be in um, and we don't have any information about who else has them. But here's an action you can take. And the action could be, we suggest you call around some other pharmacies and ask if they've got any in stock. 
And that would have been perfect. It would have been a perfect Kubo communication where that would have been put across really well. Instead of, please stop asking for rapid antigen tests. And they had these all around the store. It was it was so aggressive and so nasty that it just makes you go, you know, if I wasn't a regular chemist warehouse shopper, I wouldn't return to you. And it sort of soils the, the experience you have of all chemist warehouse stores, even though this is just one franchise holder, not everybody. It wasn't the whole chain, um, but it does make you feel a little bit, ooh, Okay, I don't feel so great going into that chemist when they're so aggressive and so nasty. All I want is to get a rat because, you know, I've been told I have to and I don't expect to be approached in that kind of way. So two very different ways of communicating. Um, but this is also, you know, really shows up big online because online we don't quite have the time or the space to be able to lay everything out in a beautiful story or to tell it in such a way that's really easy for people to understand online communication isn't designed for that it's designed for quick short sharp exchanges that have one goal to get probably one piece of information across really easily for chemist warehouse that information was we're out of rapid tests for um for uh kfc it's we're out of chicken pieces that's the singular things they wanted to get across. Now, KFC were able to do that on a quick, short, sharp post that was able to be read very easily at the front of the store um, and on their social media posts. They, they use the same wording for both. But for Chemist Warehouse, well, it wasn't quite that simple. They decided to go for a very short, sharp thing because maybe someone was sick of being asked and had lots and lots of aggressive response in there.